two nights after staying at the eco center with uh, somewhat of a civilized living structure where we had beds, we had uh, toilets and running water, we went out to the west of the country with the least civilization. Our next stop was Barkhane, that is the way you call dunes in Russian, I assume. After a full day of driving, we stopped at Barkhane and on the way there, we saw and caught our first um, monitor lizard. Like the person in charge of, you know, handling the reptiles is qualified to do all of this stuff. So we didn't hurt, we didn't damage any of these animals, we just photographed them and filmed them for a bit and we let them go.
Бог настоящий наш кошмар. Клещ скороход. Каждый человек из Сибири больше всего боится эксодовых клещей. Одно только в них хорошо, они очень-очень-очень медленные. А здесь, здесь они быстрые. И поэтому это ужас мучающийся на восьми лапках ночи. По крайней мере, он не может оттуда выползти, это уже неплохо. Ой. А, а слушай, да. Там. Точно, да. Кого-нибудь зацатщу. Опа, клеща тянет. Да. Какая же ты по... Да, слушай, затягивай. Out in the furthest parts of the country, near the cities of Muinak, Bungrad, we were lucky to have a phone signal every two to four days, maybe, while driving. The last expedition locations was the Ustyurt Desert Plateau. So back in the Soviet days, the Soviet Union did a few crazy things with nature, like they tried to turn a river around so it would irrigate more agriculture. They did something similar in Uzbekistan. So they have the Aral Sea. They used to have the Aral Sea, and a sea is formed by many rivers flowing into it. There is a theory that the sea dried out because they used all the water from the rivers for irrigation of their agriculture. So, you know, we're standing in the middle of a desert covered in shells. Maybe 60, 80, 100 years ago there was a sea here. And if we go a bit further back in time, about 150 million years ago, this place was roamed by different animals. There was an ocean, the Tethys Ocean. And speaking of dinosaurs, Jarakuduk, or the Besakti Formation, was our last stop. Okay, if you do find any dinosaur bones, you are generally not allowed to bring them back home. But we did find, well, Vasya did find a whole bunch of dinosaur bones. And it's so strange to, you know, normally see them in a museum, like precious little rocks standing there. Well, you know, a team of zoologists is just looking at a few bones found in Uzbekistan. We're just holding a femur bone or a vertebra bone. So we put them back in place, we took a few photos of them, and uh, apparently these are bones of Hadrosaurus dinosaurs.
Настоящий пустынный, ушастый нож. Это у нее уже полный размер, или она еще больше будет? Будешь творчка? Маленький богомол пришел. Маленького богомола чурни есть. Смотри.
Wait, that was not the last stop. The last stop was seeing the remains of the RLC, or as they call it in Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan, Barsakilmias, which means if you go out there, you will never come back. So how does it work? You have a sea with a lot of rivers flowing into it, then the rivers, they stop flowing into the sea, the sea slowly dries out, and all that remains is the salt. And for hundreds of kilometers, there is no sign of humans. Animals at night, they're not used to seeing humans, so they don't know how to behave. They're not afraid of us. They are curious, they jump towards us, they crawl towards us, but they have never, they, they don't know how to behave around humans. And there are no human footsteps on the beach. It seemed like something out of the world, like something from a different planet. It's plus 35 in the shade. It is almost 3 p.m. That means that it's around 40, 43 degrees Celsius in the sunlight. Delightful. Главное, я тебе ничего не сделала. Да дышит так, как ты же тут мания separating a dead pelican. Well, we needed it for research purposes, we needed to remove the furcular bone for identification purposes uh, of some zoologists, 
and uh, Vasya got the permission of removing it from the dead pelican. It stopped near the Barsakia Mies, which is a very dry place, and uh, apparently, maybe, it could not handle the migration anymore, so it decided to stop for a bit and it couldn't go on anymore. After shredding the bird to pieces, we went off to northern Karakal, Pakistan, which is an autonomous region of Uzbekistan, and that's where we would be parting ways with the rest of the team. So, Zhenya, Oleg, and Vasya, they would go on to Kazakhstan to continue their expedition, while Masha, Valentin, and I would go back to uh, Tashkent, and I would fly back to Moscow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm driving up north on the trans kind of highway. The night is sweet, a thousand stars. I'm driving up north on the trans kind of highway. Night is sweet, a thousand stars. Should I stay with you? I know. Should I stay for more? Should I stay with you? I know now. Don't want to leave anymore. Want to be in the home of love and lie with you. But in short, Uzbekistan, an incredibly beautiful country with great people and amazing fauna. I want to thank Kadi and the five exceptional people that uh, invited me and went onto this trip. So this has been great. And later on, I have a lot of videos planned. I want to talk about the camera, why it's the best camera for wildlife filmmakers. And I want to talk about what's been happening in the past year or so. See your eyes and I can feel your pulse Your beating heart gives me the rhythm Should I stay with you, I know Should I stay for more Should I stay with you, I know now